beautiful singing to God be the glory. Thank you for your presence here today. We're blessed indeed to see each and every one that's here. And I'm so thankful to be a part of this good family. Thankful that we can praise the Lord for all of our many blessings and gifts. And most of all, as we're said in the good prayer, our salvation, which is possible through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Very glad to have a dear friend and cousin, Terry Fox, and his fiance Jessica, with us today. Amen. Amen. Terry, his cousin, Danny's son, his dad's going through a tough time right now, health-wise, so uh, and a lot of people know Danny Fox and love him, and this is Terry. They're our neighbors and our cousins and dear friends. So it's good to have them with us today. And his mama Shirley was a dear, sweet friend as well that passed away some time ago. Glad you're here today. Tonight's lesson will be avoiding regrets. Regrets, I've had a few, but again, too few to mention. Regrets, how to avoid them, uh, will be our study tonight, the good Lord willing. This morning, though, we're thinking about after baptism. After baptism. Huh. It's a new sermon. Hopefully it'll accomplish some good. When I was 10 and 11 years of age, before I was baptized, I was baptized when I was 12, and so I know it was before then, but Vacation Bible School took place at the Willow Avenue Congregation. We went to the little country church, Magdalene Shamble, but we go to Willow Avenue for their big Vacation Bible School. Now Willow was located across from what's Wendy's now on uh, Willow Avenue, not in their new building on the south part of town. They had a bus that ran a route. I had to walk up to where El Cap uh, Tapatia is now, Stephen Street and Willow, the <coughs> bus ran through there. And so every day I walked and was able to be a part of their Bible school. I, it was a pretty big thing for a little country boy like me to walk that far and be a part of that effort. The preacher was either Brother Stanley McEnery or uh, Oliver Cunningham. I can't remember which of the two, but they really knew how to get the children fired up. And we was, what must you do to be saved? Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. And with great emphasis. And he would say he couldn't hear us, so he had to do it again. <laughs> then he had the girls to do it. And then he had the boys to shout it out. What must I do to be saved? But he added something that I have, you know, in my little mind, I can go back to that time and that exciting vacation Bible school. And I remember there was a thought that I never thought about before. And it would be when he would say, and what else must we do? Hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized. What else? Well, what could it be? I, I didn't know there was any possibility that it could be anything else than hear, believe, repent, confess. He said, Remain faithful unto death. Remain faithful unto death. That's what we're thinking about today. What happens after we're baptized? We are to remain faithful unto death. Revelation 2 and verse uh, 10 from writings to the church at Samaria. The Lord said they were to fear none of the things that they were going to suffer. The devil was going to cast some of them into prison that they might be tried. And you will have tribulation ten days, a short period of time. And, but be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Be faithful unto death. That's what we are challenged with. We're not once saved, always saved. But to be faithful unto death is a challenge before each and every Christian. After we're baptized, our Christian walk begins and continues until the end of the journey for the Lord coming back or if we should pass. Our challenge is to be faithful unto death after we have obeyed the gospel. We're going to sin. We're going to make mistakes. We're not perfect, none of us. But the challenge is to be faithful. We can be faithful through the grace and goodness of God. We cannot be perfect, 
but we can be faithful. And we can be forgiven whenever we do err and repent and find that amazing grace that is a blessing to all of our hearts and lives. After baptism, we're saved. After baptism, what happens? We're saved. The good reading that Eric did from Mark 16 and 16, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now that's from the Lord. Where does salvation come in that statement? After we have believed, after we have been baptized, then we are saved. The religious world, by the vast majority, teaches he that is saved shall believe and shall be baptized. Good thing to do. You ought to be baptized, but you're already saved. That's not what the book says. That's not what the Lord said. He said after baptism comes salvation. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. The challenge to us is that we recognize when it occurs, what when it takes place. Not before we are baptized, but afterwards. You know, it's like two plus two equals four. Faith plus baptism equals salvation. So what comes after baptism? Salvation. What comes after baptism? Remission of sins. After baptism comes the remission of sins. That's Acts 2 and verse 38. We very familiar with it. The challenge was, Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. About him in just a moment. But next, where does the remission of sins come? Where does it come? It comes after baptism. You need to repent. That's change your attitude, change the way of things you've been doing. Repent and be baptized. Two and two equals four. In this case, he that believeth, he that repenteth, and he didn't tell them to believe because they already believe. And is baptized for the remission of sins. Remission of sins comes after baptism, according to Acts 2 and verse 38. Not before, as the religious world teaches. What comes after baptism? Joy. Joy comes after baptism. In Acts 8, verse 39, we find that when the eunuch had been taught by Simon, by Philip the evangelist, they, he spake unto him about Jesus, the Word, and the eunuch said, well, here's water. They were passing by a stream or a pond or an oasis of water. What doth hinder me be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest, thou mayest. He said, I believe Jesus Christ, Son of God. He commanded the chair to stand still. They went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, he went on his way rejoicing. When did the rejoicing take place? After he was baptized. After he was baptized, his sins were washed away. He's a new person, a new man, a forgiven one. And so are we whenever we obey the good Lord. The rejoicing came after he had been baptized. Went on his way rejoicing. Another great example of this principle is Acts chapter 16 with the jailer. The jailer is there when the earthquake occurs and the prisoner could all escape, but they do not escape. He'd been hearing Paul and Silas singing and praying to God. He sprang into their jail cell. He said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. They spake unto him the word of the Lord. And the same hour of the night he took them and was baptized. And he set meat before them and rejoice with all of his household in their newfound religion and relationship with the Lord. The rejoicing took place with the jailer in Acts 16 after he had been baptized, washed his sins away, whatever time of the night we don't know. The earthquake came at midnight and it's after that they've been studying with him for a short period of time and he's ready to obey the gospel. His rejoicing, like Philip and the eunuch, his rejoicing, the jailer, took place 
after he was baptized. Very important that we understand that according to the scriptures. Now, what about this Holy Ghost? I had a, an acquaintance one time said, I'll, I'll tell you about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is like a rattlesnake. You leave him alone and he won't bother you. <laughs> All right, he's a rattlesnake. How about Acts 238 again? Andrew, thank you very much. Peter said, what? Repent. Did what? Baptize every one of them in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When's that going to be, when's he going to be received? After we've been baptized. After we've been baptized for the remission of sin, then the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, will be given to us as a gift. Now there's a lot of debating through the brotherhood. Is the Holy Spirit the gift? Or are we talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 12, there is a lengthy discussion by the Apostle Paul concerning nine different miraculous gifts of the Holy Spirit. And among them was healing, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, and other such marvelous gifts of the Spirit that were given to the Christians at Corinth and Christians everywhere by God. But the Holy Spirit has, that no longer continues today. We do not have the gifts. There's nobody here can speak in the language of, uh, that they have not studied. There's no one here that can raise the dead, can do a miracle. Good, some good people here and good people that love the Lord, but that day has ended. First Corinthians 13, the day of prophecy would end, the day of miracles and tongues speaking would end. First Corinthians 13. After the list given in 1 Corinthians 12. So, but the Holy Spirit himself is one of the three that we were baptized into. Remember the Great Commission of Matthew 28? Go to all the world and teach all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. We were baptized, all of us who have been baptized, hopefully were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit upon which we receive the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit, just as we receive the remission of sins, they're put together in the same verse of Scripture, Acts 2, 38. And it's not miraculous, it's not some kind of hocus-pocus, but it is a part of the relationship that we have with God. Now listen to me. Ephesians 6 and 17, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So the Holy Spirit's sword is the Word. It's associated with the Word. Works through the Word. Not just the Word, but works through our prayers and the Word of God that we can know and the will of God. So we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us in our Christian walk. To be the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But it all happens after we've been baptized. According to Acts 2.38. Well... After we've been baptized, we're saved. After we're baptized, we have the remission of sins. After we're baptized, we rejoice like the jailer, like the unit. After we're baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit. After we're baptized, we become the children of God. Bob talked about in his lesson this morning, Bible class, about being the children of God. That happens after we have been baptized in Christ. According to Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself worth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, we may also be glorified together. <clears throat> children of God is what we become, joint heirs of the kingdom, once we've been baptized. After we've been baptized, we walk in a newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4. Romans 6 and verse 4, we walk in a newness of life. 
Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in a newness of life. We act different, we live differently, we talk differently, we're not perfect, but our goal is to please the Lord and to live like the Lord lived. That newness of life comes about once we have obeyed the gospel. Once we have been baptized, we desire the sincere milk of the word. 1 Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. After we've been baptized, we start growing. Just like it's a new birth, and when a baby is born, it begins to be in need of being fed, being taken care of. So are we, and as newborn babes, we desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow by. That's after we've been baptized. After we've been baptized, we seek things that are above. Colossians 3 and verse 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not on the things of the earth. So our affection, once we have been baptized, is to be walking the light as he is in the light, to seek the things that are above. And our tenth point by which we are after baptism is that we tell others who the Savior is. That we tell others. We seek others. Like Philip and Nathaniel. Philip found Nathaniel and said, I found the Lord. I found the Messiah. And he's of Nazareth. Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He said, yes, come and see. And he came and he talked with the Lord and he was convict, convicted and converted to the Lord Jesus. That all came about because Philip wanted us to tell somebody else about Jesus. That's a part of our Christianity too, that we tell others the good news. That after we're baptized, we become evangelists to tell people there's a better way, there's a way of forgiveness. There is a Savior, there is a Messiah, and we should be serving Him. After baptism, we become citizens of His kingdom. After baptism, we are the sheep of His fold. After baptism, we are the soldiers in His army. After baptism, we are the workers in His vineyard. And after baptism, we are the worshipers in His church. I've never known anyone to this point who refuses to see the goodness and the greatness of things that happen, can happen if we open our hearts and minds and our Bibles to understand the things that be of God. After baptism are all these wonderful things that you and I can be a part of and know by God's grace. Do you believe, repent, are you willing to repent? Are you willing to confess your faith? Be buried with your Lord in baptism? And raised to walk in the of life? That's the challenge. Whether we be little children in the vacation Bible school or adults that need to make a change in their lives. I hope and pray we would make that change while there's time and opportunity. If we can assist you in any way, if you just let it be known now, while we stand, while we stand.